Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a couple of techniques for rearranging some of the rows and model states. And when we get into Excel, maybe some rows and columns, etc. So <clears throat> it won't be very difficult for you <laughs> or take very long when you're working on model states to realize, oh rats, I maybe made them out of sequence. For example, I'm making the simple part, which is dimensional lumber. And you can see I made my two by fours, then oops, forgot the two by sixes, but I did two by eights, two by tens, and then I really forgot something, and I added my one by fours here. So a couple ways that we can rearrange things, and there could be a number of reasons why we would rearrange things. A, it's just easier, it puts them in the right order, it makes it more simplified for people to make the right choices when placing in an assembly. Maybe we want to animate model states. Yeah, so it just helps us keep organized. So one of the nice things about it is I can select multiple model states. In this case, I'm just shift clicking to grab these two. Left click, hold and drag, and I can rearrange them. So if you have the right model states in play, you just have to drag them into the proper positions. You may want to rename them if that's appropriate, and then all is right with the world. So we could do that <clears throat> to add our two by sixes, right? Because there should be two by sixes between the two by fours and the two by eights. But I also want to show you this can be accomplished inside of Excel. So here's that same table in Excel. And what we can do <clears throat> is we can to easily add rows, we could just sit here and copy and then right click before the location you want to place them and we can insert and now we've added those extra two by fours and so based on the formulas that i've got going on i should have to just type in the 5.5 <clears throat> and you can see that i've got some excel formulas that round that up to make that look like the two by sixes but notice that <clears throat> my formulas are kind of goofed up here so that's one thing to be aware of when you're working in Excel is sometimes things don't always work out the way that they're supposed to. So one way that we could do this is we could write the formulas in our setup row, which I talked about in another video. So I'll show you really quickly the power of Excel. But when we take a look at the Excel row here, I can now concatenate the nominal thickness, comma, add in the values, nominal width, comma, let's go kind of quickly here, adding in that nominal length, <clears throat> and then I'll write a logical statement, if this value for the whole equals compute, then I want to add the text string underscore whole. There's a whole for this part, otherwise, Two quotes means nothing in Excel. So if I add that into my setup row, now we can have that. You see those sixes automatically increase. So that's one reason why I like the setup row as well. It can help me preserve my formulas. And then sometimes we can still use the power of Excel just hitting equal. <clears throat> and then we can set it equal to the part number for these member names and now those updated as well. But sometimes we just have to rearrange stuff. So besides adding some space here and putting in these two by sixes, I mean, realistically, the thickness should come before the width and then become come before the length. So I could right click here for the thickness. I can cut this column, right click in front of the width, and I can insert that. So I can actually rearrange these values. And it might be nice to have the nominal width and thickness that I've added myself, because of course, two by fours aren't actually two by four for some reason, but I want to at least list them that way. So I can create my own cells and I can cut and maybe put those before the part number because that makes a little bit more sense. So those are just different things that you can do. You could rearrange stuff however you want to. Whatever makes the most sense, actually I'll put it here. <clears throat> so that we can now control more precisely 
how we enter data, how we stay organized within the Excel table. So again, to recap, we can copy and paste columns and rows inside of Excel to rearrange them. But in Inventor itself, if we already have all of the model states we want, we can left click, hold and drag them to rearrange them into the proper order. So a couple of quick tips. I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.